Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of Paul Brown Show. This evening, my guests will be Miss Heidi Kent and Reverend Dr. Marsha Cook. How y'all ladies doing? Wonderful. Thank uh, you. Great. And you're psychic and spiritual readers. Yes, we are. And we have an institute in Davidson. The Kent Cook Institute. Yes. Tell ladies for if we can speak to Miss Kent. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm quite elderly, actually, and I've been in this business for about 50 years. Uh, I started off in life as a psychologist and had a private practice for many, many years, worked for many various institutions. And um, in my late 30s, I got into metaphysics and started to learn and and uh, go to schools in various places. I've taught, I've, I've been a student of some of the best teachers in the United States had to offer and internationally. Okay. And so I've been very lucky. Go ahead, Marcia, and talk about yourself there. <laughs> and I have been in the business for probably close to 40 years. Okay. And I have a degree in nutrition and natural health. So my background is very physical and nutrition oriented as Heidi's is philosophical. So what made each one of you decide to work in the psychic and spiritual reading field? Well, that's a good question, actually. Um, I started off more in the philosophical field and only picked up the tools relatively late in the last 20 years. And by the tools, I mean palmistry and numerology and tarot and ruins. Those are the tools of the trade, uh, clairvoyance, and so I picked those up because it was an additional way of helping people. Hmm? How about yourself? Help, help and hope. Mm -hmm. I was running a YMCA up in Horsham, Pennsylvania, and I found myself talking to people with their issues and their problems more and more. And so I went back to school and got some education for that and met Heidi. And the two of us said, we can do this together. And so we have gone into the business of providing hope and help to people. And that's why we do what we do. And we each have a gift. Everyone has the gift. Yes. Ours is developed. Mm -hmm. The Kent Cook Institute. Tell the audience a little bit about it and the mission of the Institute. Well, the Kent Cook Institute is almost eight years old. Okay. We have been in Cornelius for the first five years, and then now we're on the lake in Davidson for these last almost three years. And we are a meditation center. We're doing 75 classes, plus or minus a month. So we're very, very busy. Uh, we do wonderful meditation courses, and we are constantly in the in the, the with the objective and the goals of helping people so if you need help we can help you so we're accredited by the world metaphysical association okay. and the american council of holistic healers so that we made sure that we were legitimate and there was support behind us Correct. and our mission is to empower or re-empower people to live the best life they can and to be and to discover who they are and be all they can be. Why do some people want to know the future, their future, and some people are afraid to know what's ahead in the future? Well, generally, people have that fear. Correct. And that fear is, I'd rather not know and, and face it as it comes. Yes, ma'am. Other people, like to have a road map and in a sense if you do a reading with us a life reading with us we give you a road map as to what the future is going to be for you what this particular year is going to be so for example what's your birthday january 12th january 12th all right so that immediately tells me that this year for you january 12th 18 to January 12th, 19 is going to be a building and maintenance year and it's going to be a year of very hard work. Okay. 
So in telling you that information, that gives you a chance to know that as the year progresses right. and you are working harder and harder, you're going to say to yourself, oh, that crazy woman told me I was going to be working this hard. Oh. Now I work hard already. Now I got two jobs. Oh, God. It's a... But um, how about yourself, Marcia? Why do you think people are afraid to know their future? Because if it's not bright and it's not cheery, people don't want to know. We live in a world that is cloaked in fear, mm -hmm. and fear produces more fear. Correct. So if someone comes to you and you tell them the future is dark, which we do not do, okay. then there's even more fear. So they don't want to know what the long-term future will be, but they do want to know the short-term. Now, we always tell everyone the truth. Okay. Absolutely. You have hired us to tell you where you're going and what you're doing. But we always emphasize the positive. Okay. Put, that, put that spin on it because you always have a choice. Sure. You can go to the more negative or you can go to the more positive. So we direct you towards that more positive mm -hmm. information. Okay. Hypnotherapy. Describe hypnotherapy and what are some of the advantages of using this form of therapy? Hmm. Go ahead, okay. Hypnotherapy, people self-hypnotize all the time mm -hmm. and they don't realize it. Like when you're driving your car Correct. and you know you've gone from point A to point B but you don't remember the streets, yes, you actually self-hypnotized yourself. So the idea is to bring the body to a place of calm and to bring the mind to a place of calm and create new thoughts and new thought patterns. A lot of the issues and reactions we have in life are based on the patterns that we've experienced over and over and over again. And hypnosis and hypnotherapy gives you the tools to change that pattern, change the thinking, and modify the outcomes. Mm -hmm. It breaks that conditioning mm -hmm. that you've had through your life, through your childhood through your early adulthood we break through that conditioning so for example if smoking sensation is something that's very important to you uh, it we make it much easier for you to put those cigarettes down and go on to a more positive uh, thought uh, okay. We can do that within two or three, usually three, sessions. Mm -hmm. So this is an ongoing therapy. Okay. How about weight loss? Mm -hmm. I know That's that a is big one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is hypnotherapy an advantage that someone can use to wanting to lose weight? Because we have that little voice inside ourselves that says, oh, one more cookie won't hurt. Mm -hmm oh, well, you don't need to go for that walk. And so hypnotherapy pushes the part of you that says, yes, I can do it. Yes, I can take that extra half an hour and go for that walk. Yes, I don't have to eat that cookie. I can go for the carrots and the celery. It is that part of yourself that we're reaching, that we're, we're having to enforce to get you to be all that you can be. I know we see a lot on TV when people get hypnotized and they have them doing a lot of, is that real? Is that? Can be real. Can it certainly can. However, you, uh, in hypnosis, you will never do something that you would not ordinarily do in life. That's a myth. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't ask y'all to hypnotize me because, you know, I want my audience to see me acting crazy and all that. Um, life and relationship therapy is another service that you provide. Why should our audience need to know about this therapy? Mm -hmm. Well, the interesting thing about relationships mm -hmm. in our country is that in high school, we are not offering courses that are equipping young people to know the difference between, the simple difference between what is a boy and what is his motivation? And what is a girl and what is her motivation? And so relationship training is exactly that. We give you that information so that you know what it is that, that you can expect from a relationship, what's real, and what's a myth. When you teach these 
Okay, when someone joins the Kent Cook Institute, describe the classes that they take or the different, you know, services. Mm -hmm. How long is the classes? Are? So we have meditation just about every day of the week, whether mm -hmm. it's breathing or walking and guided meditation or guided imagery or sitting in sacred silence. We have meditation and we begin working that way to get the monkey chatter in the brain to calm down so that you can think other thoughts other than what keeps playing on the tape that keeps going through your mind. You can come in and discover your gifts whether you are clairvoyant, you have clear vision, or clairaudient, you're hearing something, or you are clairsentient, you're sensing through touch. And we teach people to trust themselves. Inner trust and inner light are often things that become dim as we go through experiences in life. And so the classes we teach in development, in breath work, in focus, are the main classes. And then we have fun classes. Okay like learning palmistry and tarot and numerology. And those things are all fun at a party. Correct. Mm -hmm. They are. <laughs> the other thing that we really focus on is working on your anxieties and fears. As, as soon as we can, we can walk beyond anxiety and walk beyond fear, we do a course called Stress Busters okay. so that you can take the stressors of the day and change them into a positive force. Uh, those are just some of the things we're doing at the Nook. How long are the classes? Each class is 90 minutes. Okay. Uh, some of the meditations are one hour. We have a healing meditation Wednesday afternoons. So that's one hour. There's one hour Monday morning. But most of the classes are 90 minutes. It gives us time to truly paint a picture and then to have people think about what they're doing, what they're learning, and be able to question it and respond. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a psychic and a medium? Now, that's a very good question. A psychic is an individual who's working with the collective unconscious. What is the collective unconscious, Correct. you ask me? <laughs> and that is that body of information that's floating above us that each and every one of us has access to. Almost everybody knows everything. If we could get ourselves to realize that, uh, how much further along in life we would be. So a, a psychic uses that collective unconscious. A medium actually goes beyond the collective unconscious and works directly with spirit. Also uses the collective unconscious because it's such a wonderful body of information, but goes directly to spirit for their answers. Mm. What can an individual learn by having the palms read? Hmm. Palmistry is a wonderful art. It's thousands of years old. Yes, ma'am. And it really tells you so many things. So we put up our palms. Put your palms up. Now, go ahead, Marcia. Okay. Tell this gentleman the uh -oh. big news. So the big news is that um, where your pinkies are placed, yes, mm -hmm. you are a very independent gentleman. And when Paul goes in a cave, don't stand outside the cave going, yoo-hoo, come out, because Paul's in the cave. The other thing I see is that you are a very honest, very honest person that sometimes gets you in trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, your indeed. life plans mm -hmm. is written in your hand. So are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed, man. So that would mean that's your hand of action, your right hand. Your left hand is what's called the palm of destiny. Okay. And that means that's the script you wrote. What do I want to experience this lifetime? And you put that into the lines of your hand. So we can tell you how good your health is. We can tell you about your communication style. We can tell you whether you want to travel or not. We can tell you if you're uh, disarming and charming. We can tell you if you're a good communicator with your own things versus communicating very well in the public. We can tell you if you're on the right career. But I would like you to see this very nice straight thumb here. Now you see how his thumbs are so nice and straight and mine are curved? <laughs> so that means that I actually am somewhat of a fibber, 
but you are an honest Bigger figure. <laughs> yes, no. You know, you're quite honest, you're actually. Quite. So if someone came in and they said to Heidi, for instance, to me, how do I look today? Heidi would go, oh, you look fine. Whereas you and I, being of the honest variety, would go, well, you know, you're looking a little tired. Mm -hmm. Okay. So little mm -hmm. fibs. Okay. That's yeah. probably true. Yeah. Now, when you think about this, as you're watching politicians on TV and they're waving their hands about, if their thumbs are very curved, you can be sure that they are telling you quite amazing fibs. We're not even going to go into that politics. Like, no, we're not right going to now. politics. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is that feeling that y'all get when y'all provide this information to people and, you know, it, it's life changing. It is. Yeah. It is. Now, for example, some people have not come to do careers. Mm -hmm. You know, in our society, we're all supposed to be a career of some sort. Correct. It's almost the second question you ask people, what do you do? Yeah. Now, there are just some people who have come to earn a living. They're not exempt, but they are, they haven't come to be, for example, an accountant who goes to college for four years, passes the exam, and sits in an office for 42 years and retires. That's not what they've come to do. They've come to experience, 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 experience. So you'll say that to someone whose family and friends are always pushing them. Well, what are you going to do? Well, for heaven's sakes, what are you going to do? And you say to them, you've come to experience. And the tears roll down their cheeks. I know it has to be a good feeling providing people with that positive information that you know that inspires them to uplift them to give them that means of encouragement it has to be a good feeling for for the both of you it's why we do what we do it's why we work so many hours a week and we have seen people come to the nook and sit on the couch we've got the room designed to look more like a living room okay. than a classroom and they'll sit on the couch and not talk and not move and three or four months later a completely different person is coming in the door and they're communicating and they're making friends some of our people are actually augmenting their incomes okay. by being able to practice what we've taught and their lives are enhanced and when their lives are enhanced ours are brighter mm -hmm. and it's a good feeling in fact, this summer we had a summer camp for young people okay. from age 11 to age 16. And at the very last class of the week, the very last hour of the day, we had these students in this class and each and every one of them broke a spoon with their minds in half. Mm. And it was mm. such a wonderful, empowering Thing. Each of those youngsters walked out saying to their parents, look what I did. So imagine the focus they learned in that week of training, mental focus. And some of the children had ADD type problems and issues. And imagine that they could sit there and do that, mm -hmm. how they felt, how transformative it was. So not just for them, but for their families. And then, of course, for us Correct. as grandmothers. Yeah. Grandmothers. Grandmamas. Oh. oh. Avoiding negative habits. Why is that so important to an individual? Well, I would ask you, do you want to keep banging your head against a wall? No, I don't. A negative habit is the same type of thing. And the repetition keeps you stuck in a rut. And when it's time to get out of that rut and move forward in life, we change the pattern, we change the habit. It's the same with weight loss, with smoking cessation. It's the same as when we're helping athletes improve their performance and believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. So you want to move forward in life, you have to let go of what 
was before. And how would anyone accomplish anything carrying a backpack of rocks on their back all Correct. the time? So we help you unload your rocks. We do. We have you put your rocks down one rock at a time. And by the time you've worked with us for a period of time, you are empowered. You've, you've left those childhood pains behind. You've left that conditioning behind. And you're walking through life in a much more sturdy, balanced way. And breathing, breathing, the breath is very important. Breathing. The negative habits, how does that include the individual that's in someone's life? Those negative people that Yes. You can, their vibes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important that they... And why is that, that why does that happen? Why does a person uh, marry a, an alcoholic, for example, several times over? First husband was alcoholic, second husband alcoholic, third... Because we, we are very accustomed to a vibratory rate. Okay. And each of us in an electrical person, we are accustomed to that vibratory rate. And when we meet it, we go, oh, comfortable, home. So in a sense, we have to say to ourselves, what are the positive things in ourselves that we can move beyond uh, doing and, and choosing those negative people in our lives? What is the key to that? And mm -hmm. oftentimes, when you turn from the negative to the positive, because we are made of energy, yes, that positive energy is going forth into all of the people in your lives, and they begin to see you being changed, and they begin to follow that path as well. Believing in yourself, so very important. Ah, Some so. people, they have an issue with that, but believing in yourself, why would that be so important for an individual? The fear that you are going to make a fool of yourself. Okay. The fear that you're not going to get that job. The fear that you are, you don't look good enough. Those simple fears are so important to drop and walk beyond. And once we do that, we are so empowered. It changes our entire perspective. Correct. Mm -hmm. That includes financial situations as well. Some of us see ourselves as very poor. I am very poor. I am very poor. I will never be wealthy. Oh, look at that wonderful wealthy pe person. Finance has to do with what you see and what you see for yourself. Okay. So we are physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial beings. When you can believe in yourself and all of that can come together, then you have a whole person contributing to society, to their families. Considering things from every point of angle. Tell us a little bit about that. Mm, anger. Anger is a very important uh, emotion. Um, for one thing, it stops us from going forward every single time. If we have an emotional outburst, people are put off by that. And so it is something that, what are we learning to do here? We are learning self-control. It is one of the big things that we teach at the Nook, uh, how to give away that anger and how to allow that anger to just pass along and how to retake control of your life so that Anger is not one of the things that's pushing you and pushing your buttons.